To start this project, the first thing you're going to do is pick out your fabrics. Um, after you have your fabrics chosen, you're going to make a color chart. And what you're going to do is cut a swatch of each of the fabrics, and then you're going to label each fabric with a notation that matches on the pattern. For the picture piecing technique, you need two patterns. Uh, one printed on regular paper, and then another you need on freezer paper. And you can either trace this onto household freezer paper, or you can print it uh, on your computer onto freezer paper. The pattern is divided into bold sections with these uh, heavy lines, and each section has a letter. Um, the dotted lines on the pattern just mean that in this sec little section, you have little groups that have to be sewn together. This dotted line tells you you have to sew all of these together before you can join the two. Each pattern piece has a color notation, and that is going to tell us which color of fabric to iron it to. Um, the number just tells you where the piece goes in the section, and the arrow is for directional fabric. So what I'm going to do is take the freezer paper pattern, the one with the shiny back, and I'm going to cut it out just down the center of the bold lines. And I'm going to cut each section and we're going to work with one section at a time. You never work with more than one at a time. And you cut all the pieces apart. Okay, we have the fabric picked out. We've made our color chart, so we know which fabric goes where. We're going to take our section that we cut apart from the freezer paper, look at the notation, find the fabric that's that color, and what I'm going to do is iron these pieces to the right side of the fabric, not the wrong side. And a cotton setting, you just press it. I like to use the edge of the fabric so I don't have to cut that side. You need a fat quarter of an inch around each pattern piece. If I have another fabric that's the same color, I can lay them up next to each other if, as long as I leave a, a finger's width in between. And that finger's width allows me to take the scissors and cut right down the center. And that way I get a fat quarter of an inch on each side. And you continue and take all the pieces of that one section and iron it onto the right side of the fabric. This fabric is not directional, so I don't care which way these arrows go. This fabric does have lines in it. So when I iron this pattern piece on, I'm going to take care to iron it where the arrow is going this way. So I would just iron it to the right side, press it, and come right back up. The next step is to cut the pieces out. And what we're going to do is cut a nice fat quarter of an inch around. Just use scissors and you're going to eyeball this cutting. You're not going to measure it. And uh, what I'm trying to do is echo the shape of the pattern piece. Now, you don't want rough edges like this. You want the same shape as the pattern piece. So don't leave something out like this. And this is what we're looking for for each pattern piece. One thing that I find helpful is to block uh, sections off that I'm not working off on. And what I'll do is just take paper or index cards, even sticky notes, and block off what I'm not looking at. Uh, it's a scary looking pattern, but if you only look at part of it, it's not as intimidating. Now what we're looking for when we go to sew are any two pieces that are next to each other. They have to share a common seam but nothing else is in between them. And in this section, one and two, we could put together. Now in section B, again, it's one and two you could put together. So you're just looking for any two that are the same length. So I have my number one and my number two ready to sew together. First thing I'm going to do is lay it on the pattern to make sure that my numbers are going the right direction. Then I'm going to put them right sides together. And what I'm going to do is peel back the one on top and the paper actually pops off. Do you see that little paper? And I'm matching the point of the paper up, not the seam allowance, but the paper. And I'm going to check it over here. 
Then I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to go through the fabric. I'm going to come up through the paper like this. And then I'm going to take my fingers and pinch fold it down. That little pinch fold is telling me where the paper is. And that is what I'm going uh, to use as a guide when I go to sew it. This is a close-up so you can see better what I'm doing. What I'm doing is peeling back the corner, lining the paper point up, not the seam allowance, but the point, and I'm going to swing it around, check it here, and then I'm going to take the pin, go through the fabric, I'm going to come up through the paper, and then take my fingers and pinch fold it like this. That gives me a guide for the sewing machine so I know where the paper is. Okay, we have the fold, we pinch folded it back, and we have a fold, and that's what we're going to sew next to. You use a regular stitch length, and you're going to sew away from that fold. The fold tells you where the paper is, and you want to sew away from it. So I'm just going to sew a, a straight stitch. Use a regular stitch length. You don't shorten the stitch length. And when I open this up, what I want is I want the paper right next to each other. So I'm going to open it up, and it came out pretty good, but it's not perfect. Well, you don't re-sew it. What you do is simply remove the pattern piece, scoot it over, and then re-iron it. So you re-iron it rather than re-sew it. Then after you make this adjustment, you take and you trim away the excess fabric and any dog ears, and you make it straight. And now that's ready for the next pattern piece to be added on. Sometimes the small pieces intimidate um, people. Uh, there are other ways to get around sewing these small pieces. Once you realize you can re-iron things, you don't worry about them as much, but this is another way to do it. What you can do is take two scraps of fabric of the two colors that you need. You can put them right sides together and sew a normal quarter of an inch seam line down the seam and then open it up and press it flat. Then you can take the two pattern pieces and leave them connected to each other and actually iron that on the sewn seam. You can take the line, iron it right there, iron it down, and then cut around it and treat it as one piece rather than two pieces. Sometimes uh, when you have directional fabrics, the pre-sewing or sewing two strips together first can be a little tricky. Another way to deal with that is to take the fabric that is more directional, this one has definite lines in it, this one doesn't, and place it where you want it to go. Iron it and then cut it out and again here I'm cutting a nice fat quarter of an inch Trim it well. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this small piece and fold it back along the line. Just fold it back. I'm not cutting it off, I'm just folding it. And I'm going to trim this excess. Then I'm going to take my scrap fabric and I'm going to lay my scrap fabric up against that. This one I can see through, so I'm just going to flip it. You pin it the same way um, that I pinned everything else. You can actually feel where the paper um, starts and I'm pinning right through the fabric coming up through the paper and then I'm taking my fingers and pinch folding it just like I did the other and you can see the fold there then I'm going to sew that just like I would um, the other and after I sew it if I need to reposition it and move it over I'll just pick it up reposition it and re-iron it and then trim away the excess. So this this technique is very forgiving. You can um, make a lot of um, corrections. So now I'm just trimming and making everything nice and straight and that's how that is one way to deal with a directional fabric.
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just um, sew a little bit and let you watch. Um, if I uh, come across something I think that is an important point, I'll let you know. I'm going to take these and just add to them. What I'm doing is folding this back, matching the corner, and I'm checking it over here. I don't match the whole line. I just match the corners. I'm going to put a pin, and then I'm going to pinch fold it. You can put more than one pin if you'd like. Um, if it's a long seam, sometimes I will put more than one. And then I'm just sewing along the edge. And then if I need to move something over, like see I'm pretty far there, I have two choices. I can either sew closer or I can pick them up and move them over. I tend to do the easiest thing. So what I, if I'm going to sew closer, I can pinch this together. I'm going to iron that. Then I can come back here and I now there is a little pressed seam fold. See that little fold? And I'm going to sew a little tighter, a little closer to tighten that seam up. And that way I don't have to move it with the iron. You could move it with the iron, but this is easier. And this is just going to make it stronger. It's not going to, to uh, change the picture any. So that's good enough. I let the seam allowance go wherever it wants to go. I don't care if it's uh, going to the light or the dark side. I'm going to have a lot of seams back here, so it's really not going to make a difference. Now I'm going to take this, right sides together. This one I'm going to use more than one pin. I'm matching the points of the uh, paper, not the seam allowance. Going through the fabric, up to the paper. This one I'm going to put two pins. Matching the points of the paper through the fabric, up to the paper. This is a long one, so I'm just going to give it a few little pinches just to kind of see um, where I'm going. Now the seam allowance is to cut with a fat quarter of an inch. I usually sew a, a regular quarter of an inch. So um, if I can't see the fold, what I do is I just sew a skinny seam allowance, and then I'll either sew closer or move it. So there, that's, that's so, that is sewn, and what I'm going to do here is just press it. Um, now, this is not lined up. You see how that's off? I'm just going to peel this up and move it over and make it lined up. Make it line up. And now that's just fine. At the end, you're going to take a rotary cutter and you're going to trim it all up and it'll be nice and straight and even. And while you're working with it, it doesn't have to be that way. Okay, so that's section A.